NVIDIA RTX 50 benchmarks. What they're not telling you. NVIDIA has officially revealed performance benchmarks for the new RTX 50 series graphics cards, including the flagship RTX 5090 and the RTX 5080, as well as the upcoming RTX 5070T and 5070. According to NVIDIA, the RTX 5090 could deliver up to twice the performance of the RTX 4090 in games, thanks to advancements like multi-frame generation 4X. This technology, powered by the new Blackwell architecture, leverages AI to generate up to three additional frames for every rendered frame. However, there's a point. These impressive gains are primarily shown under ray tracing and DLSS 4 conditions, scenarios where NVIDIA's latest innovations truly shine. For traditional rasterization, which most gamers and productivity users rely on, NVIDIA hasn't provided much data. This raises a critical question. Is the RTX 50 series a game changer for everyday users? Or is its massive leap forward mainly tied to niche technologies like advanced ray tracing and AI-enhanced rendering? Our take? It's too early to jump on the upgrade bandwagon. We strongly recommend waiting for independent reviews and real-world benchmarks that focus on the broader range of gaming and productivity workloads. Until then, hold off and let the reviewers dig deeper into these claims. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comments. AMD RX 9070. Is this the answer to NVIDIA's RTX 50? AMD's Radeon RX 9070 XT and RX 9070 graphics cards are making early appearances in European stores ahead of their official launch. Photos of boxed Sapphire Pulse models have surfaced in Israel, while Gigabyte's custom models are reportedly already available in Denmark and listed in German online stores. While AMD has not confirmed these release details, this timing suggests they could be looking to preempt NVIDIA's RTX 50 series launch later this month. But what's more interesting is AMD's strategy. With the upcoming RDNA 4 architecture and FSR 4 technology, AMD seems poised to focus on affordability, strong traditional rasterization performance, and improved ray tracing that meets everyday needs. If AMD can deliver better value in non-flagship cards, they might win over mainstream gamers and productivity users, exactly where NVIDIA's advancements in ray tracing and AI might not be as compelling. This is also AMD's chance to maintain competitiveness in the consumer GPU market. Avoiding Intel's missteps with their Arc series means delivering practical performance and great pricing, something that could ultimately benefit all users by driving competition, isn't it? Microsoft 365 to stop on Windows 10, a consumer rights issue. Microsoft has announced that Microsoft 365 apps will stop functioning on Windows 10 after October 14, 2025, the same day Windows 10 support ends. This means users will have no choice but to upgrade to Windows 11 if they want to continue using Microsoft 365. But is this really fair to consumers? For many, this feels like a clear case of forced bundling. Microsoft's requirement to pair Windows 11 with Microsoft 365 echoes the infamous Windows Plus Internet Explorer bundling saga that almost got Microsoft labeled a monopoly. Once again, the company seems more focused on satisfying its board and shareholders with strong financial results rather than addressing the needs of its actual customers. The bigger issue here? Transparency. When Microsoft 365 launched, there was no clear disclosure that its functionality would eventually be tied to specific versions of Windows. This lack of upfront clarity undermines consumer trust and raises legal concerns about whether this is a fair business practice. It's time for consumers and legal advocates to push back. By relying on open source alternatives like LibreOffice or switching to services like Google Workspace, users can avoid being locked into this ecosystem. After all, corporations shouldn't forget who their real lifeline is, their customers. What do you think? Is this forced upgrade strategy justified? Or is it crossing a line? Let us know below. Why TSMC said no to Samsung's Exynos chips. Recent reports suggest TSMC has turned down Samsung's request to manufacture its Exynos chips, a move that's raising eyebrows in the tech world. While this could have been a lucrative deal for TSMC, the decision makes perfect sense when you dig deeper. TSMC is already at capacity, producing Apple's A-Series chips, MediaTek's processors, and NVIDIA's high-margin Blackwell B200 AI GPUs. With such a full plate, 
taking on Samsung's orders might have caused unnecessary strain on production schedules and relationships with key clients. But there's more to it than just capacity. Accepting Samsung's order could be a double-edged sword. Samsung, being a competitor in the foundry space, might exploit this partnership to scrutinize TSMC's advanced processes. Worse yet, any design flaws in Samsung's chips could be spun as TSMC's fault, damaging its stellar reputation. In this light, rejecting Samsung's bid seems like a strategic move to avoid falling into what could be a cleverly disguised trap. After all, a lucrative contract isn't worth the risk of jeopardizing relationships with existing clients or exposing trade secrets to a competitor. 95,000 bitcoins seized, why restitution delays are risky. U.S. prosecutors are seeking court approval to return nearly 95,000 stolen Bitcoin from the infamous 2016 Bitfinex hack. While this may seem like a win for justice, it highlights a glaring issue, the lack of an efficient system to reimburse victims of crypto crimes. Currently, Bitcoin plays a major role in global scams and money laundering activities. However, the absence of a streamlined victim restitution mechanism leaves massive amounts of seized Bitcoin idol in government hands. In countries like the US and China, which have cracked down on crypto-related crimes, this creates serious liquidity risks for the Bitcoin market. Here's the problem. If these assets stay frozen, it contributes to a lack of liquidity. But if they're suddenly released, it could trigger violent market volatility. Either scenario spells trouble for investors and the broader crypto ecosystem. To address this, we need two things. Swift legal rulings that prioritize victim restitution and comprehensive legislation to handle the judicial processing of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Without these measures, the market remains vulnerable to both financial and systemic risks. TikTok's impending closure in the US. A battle of consumer choice and political intrusion. Today, we're going to take a comprehensive look at the latest twists and turns in the TikTok saga within the United States. As you're probably aware, TikTok is teetering on the edge of shutting down its services for American users this coming Sunday, January 19th, barring a last-minute reprieve from either the Supreme Court or Congress. Reports indicate that TikTok has opted to pull the plug on access for US users instead of limping along under the current onerous restrictions. Technically speaking, for those who already have the app installed, it might continue to work for a short while. However, US service providers will be barred from collaborating with TikTok. This means that Apple and Google will be compelled to yank TikTok from their app stores, and cloud hosting providers like Oracle will have to cease operating its servers. Despite TikTok's massive global popularity and its continued normal operation outside the US, it will face an uphill battle to maintain a presence in the US without the ability to be downloaded or updated. The root cause of this ban lies in the US government's demand for TikTok to change ownership. The concern is that its Chinese parent company, ByteDance, could potentially be coerced into complying with demands from China to manipulate the content viewed by Americans or surrender private data. Nevertheless, TikTok has steadfastly refused to sell to a new owner, citing not only technical complexities, but also likely opposition from the Chinese government. Now, let's delve into the far-reaching implications of this situation. Above all, this ban serves as a blatant illustration of how political biases can disrupt the free market. When the market and consumers wholeheartedly embrace a product, as is the case with TikTok, the US government's attempt to blindly ban it is clearly unpopular. The so-called TikTok refugee phenomenon where a significant number of TikTok users are flocking to other platforms like RedNote, presumably a reference to Xia Hongshu, demonstrates that consumers are making their voices heard through their actions. They are well aware of the kind of life and tools they desire. They yearn for platforms that are sociable, user-friendly, and customizable, where they can freely share the highs and lows of life, explore entrepreneurial opportunities, and even secure a means of livelihood. They certainly don't want to be exploited as political pawns. Consider the example of Elon Musk's transformation of Twitter. His success in rejuvenating the platform can be attributed to his astute understanding and adept catering to the needs of the users. In a similar vein, the migration of TikTok users to alternative platforms underlines the fact that only products that genuinely comprehend and fulfill the demands of the general public will gain traction and dominate the market. Furthermore, 
this mass migration of TikTok users also shines a spotlight on the acute issue of the information cocoon effect, even in this ostensibly globalized and highly connected digital age. Many in the US have long been misled by misinformation regarding TikTok, believing baseless rumors such as the Chinese spy allegation. This highlights how a lack of mutual understanding can fuel the spread of false information and precipitate the implementation of harmful policies. It's truly lamentable that in the modern era, such misunderstandings can still prevail, impeding people from reaping the full benefits of a truly globalized and open digital ecosystem. In summary, the looming shutdown of TikTok in the US is not merely a setback for the app itself, but also a clarion call for all of us. It prompts us to resist the encroachment of political biases in the free market and strive for a more open, inclusive, and understanding digital landscape. We can only hope that future decisions concerning technology and social platforms will be firmly grounded in the genuine needs and preferences of consumers, rather than unfounded political apprehensions. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'm eager to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Until next time.